pastors call me every day, and the sincere ones, they pray for us, leadership. I just saw Chief Hopkins. Let me tell you, the first thing I did, and Martin Luther King Commission, thank you guys, because you didn't have to call me. Thank y'all. You didn't have to. After I received the call, the first two calls that I made, so you guys will understand how professional this job is. The first call that came out was the Chief Hopkins of the Wilson Police Department. That's called respect. That I'm coming to your city. The second call that I made was to my sheriff, to Sheriff Woodard. That's called respect. It's one thing you don't do to another sheriff is coming to your county and not know it. That's called, look, we got to get back to respecting this. Disrespect people, we're living in, I ain't even got to this thing, let me push. Listen, you remember when we really trained children? You remember when mama would, would go to work and tell you, don't open this door for nobody? Not even your daddy. before the street lights come on. <laughs> now I see children all over. Boy, look, look, there is a blueprint, and if you must know the title of the message, Dr. King talked about the blueprint of how to survive. Hmm. You guys remember when you stayed with your grandparents and all the telephone conversations had to be, had to be held in that presence? <laughs> you trying to whisper to that little girl, my love you, my <laughs> And grandma said, if you love her, you better tell her in front of me. <laughs> and you had that long cord and you couldn't get a far. You stop. And she followed behind. Look at who's raising these babies. There is a blueprint that I'm seeing. And I got too many people in the jail that are not being raised. There is a blueprint. <laughs> to the store and your parents gave you the talk. Don't look at nothing. Don't touch nothing. And you better not steal nothing. Because we ain't got no money. And remember when families would tell us that every time you go out you look your best. And I'm getting to the blueprint. I tell my young puppies and I call my young pups. Listen, every time Sheriff Atkinson comes out, I look my best. Woo! <laughs> Listen, because I can't represent Edgecombe County if I'm not looking my best. And I'm not feeling my best. So how do we let these babies come out with bags on the head and pajamas on? Get to that in a second. 
We can beat them up all we want to, but somebody's got to take care of us. So don't beat them up. Don't beat them up. Dr. King said this King's word of inspiration for students at any age or any era, especially during all these troubled times. Listen, whenever a building is constructed, listen to me. You usually have an architect who draws a blueprint. And Dr. King talked about what is your blueprint to success? It ain't always I have a dream. He said, what is your blueprint? So you have an architect who draws a blueprint, and the blueprint, blueprint serves as a pattern, as a guide. And a building is not as well erected without a good, solid blueprint. I don't know about you guys, but I had a good, solid blueprint. And I'm going to tell you about it today for some people that are right here in this room. All of us in here today have and will be in the process of building the structure of our lives. And the question is whether you have the proper, solid blueprint. Dr. King said, number one in your life's blueprint, you should have a deep belief in your own dignity. Your own self-worth. Your own somebodyness. Don't allow anybody to make you feel like nobody. I always feel like you count. Because you do. And I always feel like your life has some significance behind it. There are two great events in all of our lives. It's the day that we were born. And the day we find out why we were born. I found out a long time ago with some of the people in my life that I'm a leader. Uh, you ain't got to stop But I found out a long time ago that I was a leader. He put me in place to lead people. Sadly, many of you out here today leave this world not knowing why you were born. You don't know your purpose. You'll never find your destiny. This stuff is real. You'll never find life's sweet spot. You want to be accepted. You want to be liked by everybody. You put something on Facebook, you want to see how many likes you're going to get. If you got to stand by yourself. Well, I know the plans God has when you declare the Lord. Plans to prosper and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. See, I've got some young brothers and sisters in the Edgecombe County down that's lost hope. And anytime you have young brothers and sisters that are lost hope, we're in trouble. There is a blueprint. But God loves you and I enough to make us individuals. Oh, yes. We have our own set of fingerprints. Why? Because nobody can touch the world the way we can. You have your own set of eyes. Because nobody can see the world the way you can see it. You are an original. There's nobody like anybody in this room. There's no carbon copy of you anywhere. You are an original. God has made you and nobody can beat none of you at being you. You don't have to dress like anybody. You don't have to talk like anybody. You don't have to live like anybody. You don't have to act like anybody. God loves you enough just the way you are. There are some significant and breathtaking wonders in the natural world that makes us one and all God the Creator. The Grand Canyon, 277 miles long and 18 miles deep. God made us wonder what a fix looks like. But that still is not our greatest wonder. The northern lights, the effect is brought on by charged cosmic particles entering and interacting with the Earth's atmosphere. But that still is not God's greatest wonder. Niagara Falls, a group of three waterfalls, and I'm trying to push because I'm pushing for time. Three waterfalls that are joined together, that's still not God's greatest wonder. Mount Everest, Everest, the world's highest point, 29,029 feet tall, is ranked number one among mountains for both elevation and prominence. It attracts many climbers from all over the world, and 300 people have died, and their bodies are still on that mountain. Mm. With all of that beauty, Mount Everest is still mm. not God, great God's greatest one. Mm -hmm. When you think about your salvation and what God had to work with, mm -hmm. and you're sitting in here this morning, that brother son, and I said, man, there it is. When you're sitting in here this morning, you ought to smile. That brother son said, God is smiling. Oh, yeah. He has set me free. Yes. 
And when you look at the raw material standing in front of you today that God had to use to make something out of nothing. Y'all looking at me like I'm stupid. I was nothing. He made something. Young people listen to me because the grown people already got that thought process. He can turn nothing into something. I want to cross off my butt, but if I miss, I want to be a United States Marine. Ha! <laughs> huh? Oh, man. I missed it. That is, y'all should have sent me to college because I wanted to wear the uniform. And I wanted to stay tall. And I wanted to die for my country, but I missed it. And I want to be two of my brothers with a United States Marine. I want to drive big trucks. I'm in the truck drivers in the house. I'm fascinated with big trucks. I love big trucks. Those are my dreams. And I can touch them. I appreciate those brothers and sisters who serve for our country because guess what? At some time they could they could win, they could uh, uh, get the Medal of Honor. Yeah. And you don't receive a Medal of Honor and hide it in a drawer. You take it out so people can see it. You put it on this place. So when God picked me up, he saved me. He brought me out of darkness because I was in a dark place. He didn't put me in a community. He didn't put me in a city. He didn't put me in somebody's church. He didn't put me in a county and there's no county to hide me. God put me on this place. <laughs> to say to the world, to say to everybody that Clee meets, if God can do something with this, God can save anybody. And so, so many times when we go out into the world and we're dressed up and we have the Martin Luther King back, we ain't telling anybody that we were no good mm. and that we were saved by His grace. We ain't telling anybody. Any. These young people are watching us. There is a blueprint that we've got to follow. We're missing it. So, God's greatest one is when grace and mercy comes to a soul that is lost. That's his greatest wonder. It ain't all this stuff that you see. You are his greatest wonder. A soul that is on his way to disaster, and now you're praising God for where you was at. You're sitting next to a wonder this morning. You're sitting next to a miracle this morning. You don't even know it. You're sitting next to a blessing this morning. You are God. So Dr. King emphasizes to the students how important it is for them not to be ashamed of themselves. Mm -hmm. Their lives matter. Yes. In times of bullying, teen suicide, young people, your life matters. Because our officers see it. They don't see when we go to the homes of these young people and we have children and we hurt. You got to knock on the door at 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning. And his baby's hurt himself. There's a blueprint that you guys can help us with. We can't do it by ourselves. Secondly, Dr. King said this in your life's blueprint. You must have as a basic principle the determination to achieve excellence in the various fields of endeavor. My family taught me in an early life that if I put God first, he'll take care of my education. If I put God first, he'll take care of my career. If I put God first, he'll take care of my family and my marriage. If I put God first, he'll take care of me and my safety. Let me say this. I miss my wife and son at the introduction, so let me back up. But let me tell you, they don't like to be in the forefront. Let me tell you what my wife and my son does for me. The best gift that they can give me, they give me my space. <laughs> They give me my space to do what I do. They give me my space to impact people. And if they don't give me my space to impact people, I wouldn't be up here today. So thank you to my wife and my son. They give me space. So you gotta put God first. I sat down five years ago and I wrote down all the male mentors. And I was up past 100. I still haven't did my female mentors yet because I have a lot of them. 
from my father to my uncles to my brothers to my first ever coach, Charlie Bedgood. Raise your hand back up, Mr. Bedgood. I know he don't mind standing up. Let me tell you what Charlie Bedgood did for me. Charlie Bedgood, and you see, he's not a brother. He yeah. acts like a brother. <laughs> But he showed up to 906 West King Street. I think that's the address, right? And he saw me playing ball, and I don't know, fourth grade, fifth grade, somewhere up in there. He saw me at the recreation center, man, and I was shooting ball, running ball by myself. He said, man, this dude, this dude's so serious here. Yeah. Man, my grandma ain't gonna let me come play the ball, but I gotta be home in a minute. <laughs> And if anybody knows Charlie Bedgood, he can take and talk you out of anything. <laughs> and he showed up to my house, to my grand, to my to 906 West Kingdom Street. Said this kid got to play some football. He got to play. And she was looking at him like, I ain't never let you go to no white man anyway. That's how she was looking at him. <laughs> but you know what? That was my old ball coach. And if he would have never talked, came to 906 West Kingdom Street, I may not have played college football. <laughs> And now I referee with him on Friday night. <laughs> we have fun. All I'm telling you is, it's going to take everybody. Yeah. Thank you, Coach. That's my old ball coach. My high school, my college coach from Harvard Reed to all of those guys, man. Listen, they talk to the pastors, my law enforcement supervisors, and many more. Cardell Taylor, raise your hand. I thought he was the meanest. He was my first highway patrol supervisor. <laughs> I thought he was the meanest black man I ever seen in my life. He was staying straight. He would put that big top hat on and said, boy, come on. See, I don't know if this job is for me. But he said, boy, you're going places. And I needed that structure. He retired as a major with a high patrol, and I picked up the phone. Now, how do I leave? What is the blueprint to leave people? And when you can have people like this in your life, it's got to be a blueprint. For the late man in Corbin, and I'm pushing guys. I've been a state trooper certified in this, certified in that. I was assigned security for the 74th and 75th governor of the great state of North Carolina. I've traveled the world, only four counties in North Carolina that I haven't seen. So God has been good. And at the end of the day, God has elevated me to the chief law enforcement officer in here. Hey. After all of that, none of those were the best job I ever had that I've ever had. Young people, listen to me. I know I'm standing up here in a suit and I'm, uh, and I'm talking to you. But those were none of the best jobs that I ever had. The best job that I ever had was a line cook, cleaner, uh -huh. maintenance, at Hardest Number Two on Tarver. <laughs> And guess by being kind to people and of races of di in different ethnic backgrounds. And they taught me that the customer was always right. How many of you guys go to a restaurant and like, I don't even care if you bad for something? <laughs> <laughs> they reinforced being well groomed when I came. Listen, I came to Harden with starch pants. I came to Harden with a grease down the middle of my shirt. I said, ain't no kidding to get grease on this shirt. But guess what? They ain't had a foundation. That was the best job that I've ever had. Not a trooper, not a sheriff. The foundation, the blueprint was laid. Come with your hands before God and he'll lift you up later. Dr. King says, if it falls to your lot to be a street sweeper, sweep streets like Michelangelo painted pits. Sweep streets like Beethoven composed music. Sweep streets like Lindsay and Christ sings with the Metropolitan Opera. And sweep streets like Shakespeare wrote poetry. Let me reach my young people. Work hard like LeBron James plays basketball. Work hard like Nicki Minaj raps in a song. Work hard like Lamar Jackson plays quarterback. Sweet streaks so well that the hosts of heavens and earth will have to pause and say, he'll live the great street sweeper. Yeah. And they did it well. Yeah. Whatever one's profession may be, young people, strive to be the absolute best. I may not be the best, but I'm going to do my best. Yeah. So I really thank God this morning, my family, my mentors all over the building for being
being patient with me. If God had not given me another and 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 another so when one person makes a mistake at least young people making a mistake how dare we push them to the side when God has given me all the chance to a pine on top of the hill, be a scrub in the valley, but be the best little scrub on the side of the hill. Be a bush if you can't be a tree. If you can't be a highway, just be a trail. If you can't be the sun, be a star. But it is the side that you went or failed. Be the best whatever you are. That's Dr. King. And finally, Dr. King said this is the end of my final life's blueprint. One must have a commitment to eternal principles of beauty, love, and justice. How are young and old you are, you have a responsibility to seek and make this nation a better place Amen. to live for people coming behind us. Amen. You know what turns my nerves up when I go down highways and I see paper all over the place? <laughs> Let me get back to this. <laughs> you have a responsibility to seek and make life better for everybody. And so you must be involved in the struggle for freedom, justice, and hope. Listen. I cannot. I can live without my mother and father, hmm. and I know they're in the building. But I cannot live without hope. Let that sink in for a second. Mm -hmm. I can live without my wife and son, but I cannot live without hope. Hmm. I can live without my friends, my house, and my career, but I cannot live without hope. Yes. I can go three weeks without food. I can go three days without water. I can go three hours without shelter. I can go three minutes without breathing air. However, I cannot go three seconds without hope. Mm. People of the world needs hope. You see, we're seeking God for small things like money and cars and jobs and education, boyfriends and girlfriends and husbands and wives. We need to be seeking God for big things. Like, enlarge my territory so I can share what God has done for me. Listen, this morning, I ain't in that yet. I'm in Wilson County. Lord, enlarge my territory so I can reach some young people. Surround me with like-minded folks. Young people, if you're around people that don't think worth it, you better move them back. And you better go for this. my health and strength so I can do your will, Lord. Yes, yes. I didn't realize how strong that was, young people. If you're sick, you can't do his will, Lord. It's not you can't all move around. Give me the health and strength. Give me peace when trouble comes. Lord knows trouble comes to me every day, Lord. Keep hopping. Pray for it. Make me a man of positive impact wherever I go. And don't ask God to move your mountain. Ask God to give you the strength to climb the mountain. Don't ask God to move your mountain. Just ask God for direction to go around the mountain. Listen, and don't question God, young people. Why me, Lord? See, when you're a strong brother or sister, you say, why not me, Lord? Because I don't want this to happen to my brother or my sister. Why not me? And now the king believed as we struggle with all of these problems, We've got to struggle with them with a method that can be militant, but at the same time does not destroy life and property. Mm -hmm. And so the slogan must not be burn, baby, burn. It must be build, baby, build. Mm -hmm. Organize, baby, organize. Mm -hmm. Yes, our slogan must be learn, baby, learn. Yes. So we can earn, baby, earn. Yes. And listen, I don't know about you guys. I don't know about you, but some of us send our children to school daily. $100 pair of ripped up jeans, $80 polo shirt, $200 name brand sneakers, $100 jacket, $100 hairdos, and a 10 cent break. <laughs> Blueprint. 
Now the king gave us the steps, and I'm closing this thing, to draft the blueprints for a future we'll have to build again and again with each new generation in order to strive for the just society that we need and we want. This world we're building together and it won't become a reality without collaboration, education, and rallying together for change. I love young people because young people don't sit still. They won't change. Yes. Dr. King's words will always be timely because the struggle for social justice is real and I'm going. With this blueprint, we can keep moving forward. And Dr. King said this, we must keep going. If you can't fly, run. run. And if you can't run, walk. Yeah. And if you can't walk, crawl. Yeah. But by all means, keep moving. Yeah. So I know the day is coming where I'm not going to be able to move fast. Think fast. Remember the things I used to. And then I will have an end date to face judgment. People, our life is just a dash. I've always said, if I, I've always said, just like Dr. King, I won't live long because I think so much. I think all the time. And I'm thinking about other people. Man. So your life is just a dash. The Bible says it's just like a vapor. It appears for a little while and then it vanishes. That's your life. We're not responsible for the date of birth. We're not responsible for our date of death. But we are responsible for what happens in between. All right, now. Dr. King cited Dr. Benjamin E. May's 54-word poem. I only have a minute. 60 seconds in it. Yeah, somebody know it. First of the pardon me, and I can't refuse it. I didn't seek it, and I didn't choose it. Mm. I'm a suffer if I lose it. Give an account if I abuse it. Only a tiny little minute, but eternity is in. What are you doing with your dash? Is your life useful? Is anybody going to miss you when you go? Mm. What are you doing with the days God has given you with the days you have left? Stop crying about what's going mm. and thank God for what you have left. All right, right now. All right. And the question the Lord is going to ask me, and it won't be, how many awards did you get in your life? Come on now. Preach it. And it won't be how popular you are in your All social right now. Preach it. And it won't be how many degrees you've got. So yes, sir. And it won't be whether you went to more house or no house. Come on now. And it won't be how beautiful your house is. Come on now. And it won't be how much money you made. In your yes, sir. Room. And it won't be how much you got in your 401k. Come on now. And it won't be what kind of car you drive. Huh. And it won't be what sorority and what fraternity you Come on in. now. And it won't be how many stocks and bonds you have. All right now. Lord, I did a lot of things. I did my job well. The world and man honored me for doing my job. Lord, I went to school. I studied. Hard. I got a degree. I paid back to Wilson now and it's gone down it. He's not concerned about any of that. Dr. Mm. King stated that here's what the Lord's reply is going to be. Ooh, but when I was hungry, come on now. You fed me not. I was sick. Yes, sir. You visited me not. Mm. I was naked and you clothed me not. Yes, sir. I was in prison and you weren't even concerned about me. Who are we concerned about? Come on now. So I believe that Dr. King, if he was alive today, he would enlist an army of young people mm. to help each other in America in the education process. He would trust them to bring their energy and a sense of justice to end gang violence mm -hmm. and to reverse the feeling of helplessness to hurt so many people that are hurting as young people. He would keep marching against unjust laws, racism, war, and poverty. Dr. King made America a better place to live for all of us in this room this morning. Yes, sir. As I close. This is what he said. Because our young people got to learn more than I have a dream. Come on now. This brother was strong. Yes, sir. This brother, this brother was, was, I didn't realize how strong this brother was. This is what he said, and I close. Fleece and locks and black complexion cannot forfeit nature's claim. Skin may differ, but affection dwells in black and white the same. Mm. And if I was so tall to reach the pole or to grasp the ocean at a span, I must be measured by my soul. The mind is a standard of the man. Mm. This is the blueprint. Thank you, guys. All right, now.
Let the church say amen. We are God's masterpiece. We must follow the blueprint. We now like to have the Sally B. Howard chorus. Come back. No, no, no. Rhythm and soul. I'm sorry. Rhythm and soul. While they're preparing, let's give Sherry Cleveland, Lee Atkinson, another hand. He wrote a song called My Tree. And when I think of God and Martin Luther King, I think of all the stuff that he accomplished with these various things. And the amount of courage, the amount of courage and wisdom that he had to have to take on that leadership role. So the song is going like this. Yeah. 